God gave me my children, and He expects me, and it is my responsibility to raise them the way that He wants me to raise them. And we need to learn to have that unquestioning obedience when God calls us to do things. I'm really close to my parents, and I wouldn't change it for the world. Hi, my name is David Parkerson, and I'm the founder and administrator of Home Life Academy, an organization that is serving thousands of home educators across the nation. And I am so excited about this growing homeschooling movement in our country. And we're here in the beautiful rolling hills of Tennessee to hopefully inspire and equip you to bring your kids home and to teach them and raise them up in the gifts that they have. So come join us in this exciting movement, the homeschooling movement. I guess the best way to talk about the homeschooling movement as a whole is to talk about how our family got involved in it. Because it was late 80s when my brother had been diagnosed with a learning disability, and our family was just spiraling downward. And, uh, you know, he had been through countless programs to try to rescue him, and he was in special needs classes, and, and just one failed attempt after another, and nothing worked. And after finally deciding to homeschool, my brother turned a corner and he began to come alive. And that's when we saw the brilliance of allowing a child, allowing a student to find their own strengths outside of a school system that is telling them what to learn, telling them when to learn it. And it's, that's really when the homeschooling movement started for us as a family. And then we kind of been watching it now for about 20 years, been involved in it. And what used to be just just uh, a handful of homeschoolers is now, some statistics say, nearly three million um, nationwide, and growing at between seven to 12 percent a year. I taught high school for five years. Uh, this was when we lived in Texas. And what got my interest in homeschooling, I had never even heard of homeschooling before, except that uh, we lived in the Houston area. And in the Dallas area, there were some homeschoolers who were being put in jail for uh, truancy charges for keeping their children at home and teaching them. And I thought to myself, as I'm teaching in this high school, how wrong is that? If these parents want to choose to teach their children, they're probably doing a better job than I am because I have 30-some students and I can't get to everyone. But these parents only have a few students. So that started the ball rolling in my mind about homeschooling. And I loved teaching and being in front of the classroom, but I also felt very inadequate because there were students who were slipping through and I couldn't get to them. In the traditional ways of learning, there's a standardized curriculum, a standardized test, and a standardized approach which assumes that children themselves are standardized when they're not. I had three small girls uh, and basically no family support. Uh, my family thought it was a really weird and stupid thing I was doing. Uh, I had actually heard from homeschooling about a friend who did home, from a friend who did homeschool. I had mentioned to her that I didn't want to send my little girl to school because a handgun had been confiscated in the school she was going to go to. And she said, well, have you never heard of teaching your children at home? And I said, the basic question, is that legal? So uh, Doris filled me in and basically as I proceeded, I realized this was, you know, God's way. This was, this was great. It gave me a chance to be with my children all the time. I. I feel sorry for, for mothers who miss out on the adventure of teaching their children to read. Um, I had one little, uh, my middle daughter at that time was ADHD. And I don't mean a, a mild little case. I mean, she had 15 of the 16 symptoms. All she did not do was bang her head in the wall. Uh, she was a really tough one to teach with her energy. Um, took a lot of prayer. A lot of prayer. When kids are allowed the opportunity to find their own strengths and their own genius in them, it'll be there and it'll come out. And then the parents are able to step back and go, wow, I didn't know my kid could do that. That's amazing. And so you get them more resources and more things to do and, and pile that around them uh, so that they can learn and grow. So that's when we really, that's when I really looked at the homeschool movement and said, this, this is really good. This really has tremendous potential to release some kids from, 
uh, what, what is uh, not allowing them to grow and learn at a rate that they need to. When my husband and I started having our children, you know, we had talked about it and he supported my decision. I'm just out of teaching and I'm with my kids at home. And then when they started school, there wasn't even, it really wasn't even a conversation, should we do this? It was that we both knew that homeschooling was the right thing. We realized that it was our responsibility to raise our children and that it would, we could not allow someone else to raise them, an institution or the state or to even teach them or to form in their minds a philosophy of life, but that it was all our responsibility. And as time went on, our decision was uh, supported by studying the scriptures and finding out for sure that the God had charged the parents with the responsibility of educating their children. Proverbs is addressed to young people, specifically boys, but to all young people. This has got to be the foundation of why we homeschool. It says in chapter 1, verse 7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. And the fear here is that great King James word for respect, awe, unbelievable admiration and love, dedication that respect for love, that respect for God, that respect for the God that created you helps you in any and all endeavors. And so it's my job to teach my children as the spiritual head of this household a love for God that gives them a foundation in which to work from. We made the choice for me not to work, to stay home, and instead of um, putting all that money in the bank, which Anything can happen, but when you train up your children, um, that's been our investment, and so far it's really paid off. <laughs> you know, really we haven't had real problems with the children. We're really close as a family. We've got two now that have left home, and you know, they're best friends with each other. Um, we are very close to our children. My name is Kristen. I'm 13 years old. I've been homeschooled all my life, and this is how my day goes. And here I am at school. At first, I didn't like reading so much, but now I love it. Homeschooling is very different from sitting in a classroom. I can educate myself and do it at my own pace. The other thing about homeschooling is you don't have to sit in a classroom and try to keep up with everybody. You can go out and feed the animals, and that's part of my education. I've learned to get my own work done, so I have to be very responsible. Sometimes I do my schoolwork with other homeschool friends. I wouldn't want to do my school any other way. I get out of bed and go to the computer and check my email because my brother and I email each other. He's in the Air Force Academy. And after that, I'm ready for school. I am at school. I'm getting ready for my ACT college entrance test and so I'm studying for algebra and doing some refresher trainings on that. And I feel very responsible for that and making sure that I pass that. Most of the time I study on my own, but I do have some of my buddies come over and we do some of the tests together. One of the things I like to do is read in the morning. You know, my dad has been teaching me the Bible since I was a kid. And um, I like to get away, reflect, read, and study. I'm also a second lieutenant in the Civil Air Patrol. And every Saturday, we have our meetings 
where we do search and rescue training, aerospace training, earthquake preparedness training, and uh, things like that. You know, my dad's a carpenter, and he's been bringing me in the shop and teaching me how to use some of the various tools of the trade. You know, my dad is one of my best friends. Moms will start to homeschool, they'll get into it, and they might get discouraged because they feel that they are inadequate when it comes to um, teaching a certain subject. They feel that maybe they are not able to teach it very well like they would in the public school and everything. But what we tell parents is that, you know, it doesn't really matter you know, even if you were the world's worst teacher, you were still doing so much better than they are in public schools. If for no other reason than the mere fact that it is a one-on-one -on -one situation. It is you and your child. It is not some other teacher that you don't know raising your child for you. For you, and your, That teacher does not understand your child's um, behaviors and mannerisms, doesn't really understand the way your child learns, but you do because you gave birth to this child. You know this child. You've known this child since the moment they were born, and you know every little part about them, and so you will do so much better than any other stranger who would ever try to teach your child. Who is raising your kid? I mean, if you look at a room full of 14-year-olds in the school system, who is raising your 14-year-old? Most 14-year-olds look like and act like all the other 14 year olds in that peer group. But in a homeschooling you have this opportunity for your child to be influenced by many different ages and brought up and so the maturity level of the student and of your child could be greater because of those older peer influences. And that's a good kind of socialization. Basically, I've been doing this a long time. I've had almost any learning style you can imagine. I've had to teach visuals. I've had to teach audios. I've had to teach um, kinetic. And my new one is social, and that's a really hard one for me. <laughs> uh, the boy just needs uh, constant attention so that he can learn. Uh, it's his style, and God is really stretching me on this one. Uh, if you're considering homeschooling or already doing it, I really encourage you, learn your child's style. Learn how that child best absorbs information. You can't always feed him uh, his lessons that way, but you know, you can tailor things to your child. There are many different types of philosophies of education. There's a whole spectrum of things available to you. You don't have to be set if one thing that you're doing is not working, what we encourage is to try different things until you find what works for your student. Um, one, on the far, far end of the spectrum you have your textbook approach, which is just basically like you're bringing the schoolroom home into your house, and that may work for some people and that's fine. On the, uh, you also have a literature, classical uh, based education, you have a lifestyle of learning, you have parents that use totally, uh, they totally use unit studies, and then on the far end you have unschooling. All of the education is learner-centered. It is uh, basically, it is all formulated around the student. So whatever that student wants to learn that day, that's what the student learns. You have unit studies, and with unit studies, you take one specific topic, like for instance, the Civil War, and you do everything about the Civil War. You pull in geography, you pull in math, you pull in history, you can pull in writing. Everything can be centered around, all the different uh, subjects of education can be pulled into this one topic. With the classical and literature-based education, um, you are doing a lot of logic, a lot of rhetoric, there's a lot of Greek and Latin worked into the curriculum. You're going to read all of the classic literature that is so, so rich in all of these areas. Um, and then with the lifestyle of learning, what you have is when you wake up in the morning, all of life is a learning experience. So you may not be doing a math lesson, you may be going outside and helping dad uh, fix the car and that's going to help you later in life. Or you may go and you may do math in the grocery store that day instead of doing math in a textbook. And then of course at the very end of the spectrum you have the textbook approach which is where you know you get your math lesson, you get your math book out and you do the problems in your math 
math book. There are many different publishers for the textbook curriculums. There's Bob Jones University, Abeka, Alpha and Omega Publications, and Accelerated Christian Education. So what we encourage is that you try whatever works for your student. Try everything at least once and find what works and stick with it and that will help your child flourish. Most of the time when people think of homeschooling, the first thing they start thinking about is what curriculum do I need to get? You know, what kind of books do I need to have? And I would say, yes, you need to concern yourself with the books, but for me, I think the first thing that I would look at is what kind of character training am I going to do? How am I going to raise this child so that this child is productive, not just going through the motions of life, but really being a productive citizen, being not just a good little boy or a good little girl, but to become a godly man or woman. These are some of the things that, to me, are crucial in homeschooling. It's not just the academics, although that is an important aspect of it. The things that we have enjoyed more are the hands-on. There is so much curriculum out there nowadays. There's so many different choices. You can search forever, and you just really have to try things. They're gonna be different in each family. It's different things that you could do for one child that you need to do differently for the other. So you can't even take the same thing and do it um, exactly the same for each child. Our, my biggest um, encouragement would be that God has gifted you with your children. The way that we feel that is that God gave me my children, and He expects me, and it is my responsibility to raise them the way that He wants me to raise them. So I stay in prayer with Him, and keep the communication open with him. And he, it is amazing the things that he sends my way so that my children get what they need. I'm a parent and I homeschool my children. I have five children. We've done three of them are just out of school or getting ready to be out of school. Um, and I have two smaller ones at home. And all the children that come here to the co-op are homeschooled at home. We just meet together uh, to support each other and to help take care of some of the classes that we might feel as a parent we don't adequately get enough of at home. Um, I personally have been homeschooling my children all the way through. I was a teacher beforehand, and I just saw the real deficits in the education system. And so when we started having children, I decided to homeschool mine. With the co-op class, I do the junior high, senior high teaching, uh, the writing and the uh, literature part. I see a need for the uh, writing skills to be refined. And so we focus on reading some contemporary literature and some classics, and then we do a lot of writing in our classes. Right now we're working on essay writing, which um, beforehand we had been doing just paragraphs. Um, I, they write for me, I read them, I help them correct them, they go home and redo them and turn them back into me for a grade that their parents can use, but then their parents have work at home for them to do also. So this is just a compliment to their home school. And it's a compliment to my homeschool at home also. One question that parents ask a lot is, how do I teach that really hard subject like Algebra 2 or Geometry or Chemistry? And what brought the most comfort to me was realizing that I wasn't required to teach above my own understanding. That was good. Right. That, that helped me a lot too because I was thinking, how am I going to teach them physics and economics and you know, different things that I wasn't mentally capable of doing. I had to learn it my own self. 
And once I learned, you know, uh, even teaching them how to read when we first started, I thought, how do you teach somebody how to read? Uh, you know, I didn't, I, I thought, well, C has two different sounds, you know, <laughs> and just all the phonics, everything that goes along with reading. That's where, you know, a lot of parents, they get to that point, they're frustrated, they think, I can't homeschool, or they decide never to, never to even try to homeschool because of those hard subjects kind of looming out there in, on the horizon. Well, there are methods, there are ways to reach uh, those subjects and teach them quite well. There are great resources available. If you look online, look at bookstores, ask around with other people that are homeschooling their kids, you'll find that there are a lot of different options. And another thing is co-ops, uh, where parents are getting together and sharing the resources and the responsibilities. You'd be surprised how many parents there are out there that can teach those harder subjects and all they want is for you to ask them for help. And you can come and bring your kids together and teach those harder subjects and go right on through to get a high school diploma and a transcript and a portfolio that would get your kid right into college as a homeschool graduate. Another question that a lot of parents have is, what about athletics? What about all the different sporting events? Well, those two, we're starting to see homeschoolers cooperating to start athletic teams. There's homeschool groups in every city now that are playing nearly every competitive sport against other schools in some cases. And even we've seen some kids go to college on athletic scholarships as a homeschooler. And as far as colleges go, we're even beginning to see a lot of dual enrollment programs where colleges are dipping down into the homeschool resources, the homeschool programs, and the homeschool kids and bringing them into their college uh, campuses and onto their college uh, classrooms. And they're learning there in the environment of the college. And another option that we're seeing is online colleges. Many homeschoolers are starting to gravitate toward these colleges that are producing uh, programs that are entirely geared toward homeschoolers and allowing them to complete an entire degree online. So there are many different courses available, many different classes available, and there are, more importantly, there are people who want to help you. So if you're thinking about homeschooling, plug into some support groups and find those people who are there waiting to help. These moms to come together and to say, I'm struggling with this, can you help me with this? Or what, um, what curriculum did you use? Did this work for your child with this kind of learning disability or whatever? The moms in your area will be able to pull together and to pull the resources. When we first started, my husband was the one that encouraged it and I wasn't sure. And what has helped me is getting with other moms who are like-minded when when I was very young, when my daughter was very young, she was probably about two, we had other homeschool moms in our church. And so I started to come up there and babysitting the other kids so that I could be around Christian moms and learn from them. And that has really helped me and through the years. We have just, uh, we've been with a support group. Support groups are very important. When I first moved out where we are now, went to a support group, met other moms, and started kind of gleaning what they were doing. And that helped, and it helps to be around them to, to look. You're gonna hear a lot of different ideas and what people do, and you have to really take them into, into your thoughts and, and work with your husband. It's a team process, and you have to really, what we have done is been in prayer about God and let God lead our direction. We've, we've done a, a multitude of different things. And um, the biggest thing that helped, though, is being with other, other moms who are homeschooling, older moms who have done it and have ones that are already in college, have a lot of experience, and, uh, and you can learn a lot. My children are are precious to me and uh, each one of them has individual needs and uh, each one of them is taught um, on his own level uh, and I have so many different age levels to teach and uh, just one-on-one -on -one with each child every day um, and God's Word would um, I feel like I've, I've done what I need to do for that day and and if you'll concentrate on teaching character and virtue and not be intimidated by the overwhelming task of teaching academia, you will have a product that will naturally learn academia. Teach the righteousness. The heart is there to pump the blood, the lungs will breathe the air, the brain is due to thinking, it's covered by the hair, the knees are there Try to 
I love homeschooling. I, I love the freedom we have. We have animals, we have a pig, and we have chickens, and we have a cow. She milks a cow twice a day. <laughs> and I, I love all the adventures we have in our woods, and it's just, we learn from experience, and she loves teaching hands-on, so it's not boring, and I don't dread school like most of my friends that do go to school. And I don't have the stress or the problems that they have. Um, I did a curriculum when I was growing up through kindergarten, first grade, second grade, third grade. And when I hit junior high, it was getting a little harder. I didn't like the curriculums. They kind of bored me. And now we're doing a classical school. And it's, I really enjoy it. We also have a co-op group that we meet with, and that's like the most fun thing of the week. Uh, we do hands-on stuff, and, and we have a teacher that helps us with our papers, and it's a lot of fun. Friends who go to public schools, their most concern is not seeing friends, but I get to see people three days in the week, and it's, it's a lot of fun. There's programs out there, there's TV programs that where there's a teacher up there, but what I like the most is our co-op because there's so many moms that do, they all have different careers, so they all know how to do this, and there's co-ops everywhere, and they just, they can help. All right, my name is Joshua, and uh, I've been homeschooling my whole life, and my other three brothers were homeschooled for last year, and I think it's a great experience, even though me coming here and also doing my schoolwork at the home and it, it's real it's real fun and it's safe and everything and bottom line is that it's 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 I think you get more education out of it. It was been kind of rough at first and my mom did her very best. She had to quit her job so that was a big sacrifice for her and um so eventually she started teaching us for a while and then once we started reading me and my older or me and my second youngest sister uh, we started teaching ourselves math english and that was pretty much the main things we stuck with for a while while she st stood back and helped my other two little brother and sister it's just a gradual process that i believe it builds up character and who you are and it really makes you I mean strong in the lord for starters and just really like get you focused on learning to do things for yourself. Well, I know there is about two things that are fun, art and music. That is what's fun. And while sometimes math can be fun, <laughs> Uh, my name is Brianna England, and I have homeschooled my whole life, and I really, really love co-op. It's a great, a great thing for homeschoolers. Um, the reason that I homeschool is, well, there are a lot of reasons, but the first reason is because my parents have seen the things that are going on in the schools today, and they didn't want me to be a part of that. And um, our main focus is really God and His call on my life. And they knew that the best way to support that would be homeschooling. And also because they wanted to have a relationship with me. And that's really important to them. And homeschooling has really helped with that. Um, I'm really close to my parents. And I wouldn't change it for the world. Also, my learning ability is harder because I'm totally based on relationship. And my mom talks about it all the time. Like, whenever I was little, she would say something. And I'm like, but when am I ever going to use that? And it would be really hard for me to do schoolwork on my own, and I needed one-on-one -on -one attention. And that was really important. And my mom knew that right from the beginning, so schooling has really never been an option. But the main reason it hasn't been an option is because um, my parents really rely on God to tell them what to do. And going to school just isn't there for us. And um, I love homeschooling, and I really enjoy doing it for high school work because... Um, like, we also do Veritas. It's a tutoring school, and I've only been going one day a week, but next year I'm going to go two days a week. And they give me all my schoolwork and everything, and I do it on my own. But if I have questions, I'm, my mom's just there. And a nice thing about homeschooling is that I can get done as soon as I want to, as long as I get all my schoolwork done. 
I can go out and play by noon. You know, it just matters on how much I have done. And that's really nice for me. And I really feel sorry because like, I see the school bus go by at like 6.30 or something and I'm still in bed. And then they just get out of school and the school bus is going back by at 4.30. Whereas I have all that time with my mom and I couldn't imagine being separated from my parents for that long. So it's really important to me to have that relationship with my parents. I don't have to dread getting up in the mornings. I know I won't get made fun of and I won't have any problems with um, made, being made fun of for having a relationship with Jesus. I can just wake up in the mornings and say, I'm spending this day with my family, I'm having it with Jesus, and I get to see my friends. And it's just really great, and I love it. And I like being able to manage my own time. And so, yeah, I love homeschooling, I think it's great. <laughs> my schooling was tailored to me. Um, most teachers would not take the time with one specific student to find out how to teach them to read. What my mother ended up doing was getting these, these foam puzzles and, and I would bang the letter in as she would say what it was and that's how I learned letters. I think homeschooling really prepared me more socially than public school would have because I was around a lot of different people from all walks of life and from all different ages and I was able to completely go from school to life because that's what it was. That was life. Um, work is more like play to me sometimes because I enjoy it so much. I, I really like helping people and I don't think I would have been ready to get my associate's degree when I did had it not been for homeschooling. I think I matured a lot faster. I, I believe that homeschooling has helped build my faith because I was allowed to explore on my own without any pressure whatsoever. Uh, I read the Bible whenever I wanted. It's really showed me that the Bible is the Word of God. I've always believed that homeschooling is one of the three most loving things that you could do for your family for your children that is, the first thing would be to introduce them to Christ as their Lord and Savior. The next thing that you would do would be to maintain a stable home life. And third, to homeschool. Homeschooling is an extremely sacrificial thing to do. And I'm not saying that if you don't homeschool that you don't love your children because I'm sure that all of you listening and watching this video that you do love your children. But homeschooling, it is truly a loving act. Looking at the pens and the pencils and, and, and what's written in the textbook, that is important. But what I keep finding in talking with many homeschoolers that if they're not organized, somehow that day is not going to flow. And I talked to several homeschoolers. I am the support group leader for a, a homeschool support group. I'm also the vice president for the Memphis Home Education Association. I get countless calls from new homeschoolers and also people that have been homeschooling for a while. The problems that I keep hearing again and again are the same. The, the lack of organization, trying to figure out how am I going to go about doing this homeschooling. I've heard uh, of a lady that I met and she said that they didn't have school that day because they couldn't find a pencil. Now I just assumed that she meant that they were looking for any excuse because they just really didn't feel like doing it that day. But the more I talked with her, that was really why they didn't. They literally spent the majority of their day looking for pens and pencils. And in my mind, I was trying to figure out how could that be. As a homeschooling mom, one of the things that I also have a lot of trouble with is finding the time to have to do everything that I have because I, I tend to wear a number of hats and I'm involved in a lot of different organizations. So what I've discovered is that scheduling makes all the difference in the world. So no longer am I stressing about 
when am I going to get the laundry done? Or when is the, you know, when, when do I get the shirts ironed? You know, my husband is an executive and he's also a pastor. So, you know, as, as a minister, you know, they always want to have those starched white shirts. And it just seems like on Sunday morning, that's when I remember, oh yeah, I need to iron. But that's not the time to start ironing. That's the time to get ready, get up, get out the door. So what I started doing is I would schedule a specific day. That's when I'm going to iron. So Sunday morning, I don't need to be stressed out about when am I going to do this? The other thing is that when it's time to clean a particular room, I mean, our master bedroom, you know, that tends to be the, you know, the dumping ground for so many things. So I need to remember what day am I going to do it? So I put it on a specific day. And then a number of other things that I need to do they're scheduled in there as well. Even the time that I go to the dry cleaners, when I go to the bank, everything is on a schedule. So I don't have to worry about when am I going to do this. That stress level goes way down. Another thing that I, I was thinking about just to really encourage homeschoolers, because homeschooling is not about just academics, but it's really a way of life. It's a way that you, you think about and process things very differently than someone that's in a conventional school. Because in a conventional school, pretty much that school runs your household. It will dictate when you can do whatever it is you choose to do, as far as going on a vacation or just, it's a beautiful day, let's have a picnic. You can't do that in a conventional school. But as a homeschooler, you're doing your scheduling. You're deciding whatever it is that you wish to do. Just do it and enjoy yourself. Enjoy your family because you're really shaping your child as opposed to just dealing with what the school system gave back to you. You, you are doing the actual shaping. One of the things that I have learned from homeschooling is to trust God. Sometimes things happen that don't make sense to us, things that we can't understand, and we need to learn to have that unquestioning obedience when God calls us to do things. Because I know there are parents out there that, you know, God has said that he wanted you to homeschool and you're still thinking, no, no, I, I, I can't do this. How could I possibly do this? I'm here to tell you, trust him. Once again, I'm left alone in the house with four children, 10 and under. And I'm telling you, I forgot how hard that was. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a challenge. There were a lot of different concerns, uh, especially budget, uh, because I didn't work out. I was ill, and plus I wanted to be there for the children. Uh, I remember one time when uh, money was nil and I needed to order some school supplies, and my oldest daughter, Karen, said, Mommy, where are we going to get the money for this? Because I, I made out the order, I got the catalog, made out the order, and I said, God will provide. Then uh, the very next morning, there was a check in my mailbox. It was a, actually a money order from Anonymous uh, for the exact amount, I'm sorry for the exact amount we needed. I mean, it was the exact amount. And to me, that just is a awesome display of God's power. Right now, we're having challenges with, once again, I'm trying to homeschool while I'm ill. If that's an issue for you, just know that God's grace will cover it. I do get emotional, and you know, that's okay. Uh, when I think of what God has, has helped me through, I was so ill when Emma, the four-year-old, was a baby. It hurt to pick her up. Um, I still have trouble with pain and such, but God is, is bringing us through it. Um, basically, anything that has been thrown my way, I've, I've had to back off and say, oh, God, Am I doing what you want me to do? And always there's been some affirmation. And so we've plowed ahead. And he has rewarded us so greatly. I think this strengthens my children's faith.
I, I really do. My children seem to have a stronger faith than some adults I know. You know, our country was founded on this very same thing, the very principle of, of home education. Now back then they didn't call it homeschooling because the term homeschooling did not exist. You know, if you went up to George Washington and you said, George, where do you go to school? He'd say, what do you mean? Well, do you go to public school, private school, or homeschool? He'd go, I've never heard of those. You see, back then, in the early foundations of this country, those three options did not exist. Everybody, pretty much, learned in a home environment and in some small one-room classrooms. But there was no compulsory attendance laws in this country. There was no standardized curriculum. There was no standardized testing or high-stakes testing. You know, we talked about socialization and peer influence, and that is an issue. And many of the parents that choose to home educate do so because they want to pass on their own faith to their kids. And this is such a great option to be able to do that because in the end, you get to spend a lot more time with your children. And that's when it counts. That's where it really counts because in every child is a unique gift, a unique calling, and a desire to, to reach their maximum potential. And you can help them do that and help them fulfill their God-given destiny. Heavenly Father, our great divine master, our fountain of living waters, thou who has created us from the very dust of the ground, hallowed be your glorious name, which is exalted above all blessings and praise. We thank you from the very depths of the calmness of our spirits that you have produced through faith in your beloved Son, His Majesty, the Lord Jesus Christ, that we are the children of God through faith. I ask you at this time, O oh Father, that everyone in the, the hearing of my voice that will ever hear this prayer, that you would show them that it is our responsibility as God's people to teach our children and to teach them righteousness and to raise them up in the way that they should go, that they might bring glory and honor and praise unto thee, for you are worthy.